possible and fighting to make it a reality. Leadership has many different faces and voices. With this program, it's our mission to provide a platform for the voices we believe can change the world. And now it's my great honor to introduce the person who made this possible. She's a good friend of mine, an extraordinary supporter of the University of Texas, and a true Longhorn. Let's hear it for Kendra Scott. Got that sunshine in my pocket Got that good soul in my feet I feel that hot blood in my body When it drops, ooh I can't take my eyes off of it Moving so phenomenally Come on like the way we rock it I did a dress rehearsal earlier today and there were empty seats out here but to see all of you and all of your faces your smiling faces I cannot even tell you this moment is surreal I could have never in a million years dreamt this big, especially 18 years ago when I started this out of my extra bedroom with a few little tools and a newborn baby. Oh, hello, okay, there we go. Can you hear me now? Do I need to repeat myself? I'm pretty loud normally, so you might have been able to hear me starting, but I literally was saying, I couldn't have dreamt this big. I could have never dreamt this big. And I remember when I started and I had my little newborn baby and we were making our first collections in my bedroom 18 years ago and thinking about so many obstacles that we were facing and being told no day in and day out, being told we weren't good enough or I wasn't smart enough or I didn't have the experience or that you couldn't be a real fashion brand out of Texas. Oh boy, were they wrong. But here we are today making the impossible possible. And this is what is so exciting. Ayn Rand had this great quote, and it says, the question isn't going to, who's, who, I'm sorry, the question isn't who's going to let me. The question is who's going to stop me. That is the spirit of this program. Our mission is to strengthen the next generation of courageous, creative female leaders. And not only just leaders in business, but beyond. We want to change the world. This program has so many exciting opportunities here on the UT campus. We are going to have an amazing curriculum. We're going to do a series of speakers events, bringing in dynamic leaders from cross-disciplinaries, from athletics to education to philanthropy, to show what the face of leadership looks like and to bring those attributes here to the University of Texas so that you can meet with them, learn from them, mentor, get mentorship from them. We're gonna have amazing internship opportunities for our students here at UT. We're also going to have a massive women's summit. And watch out folks, because the th people we are bringing right here to Austin, Texas is gonna blow the world's mind. And all of this will be a resource for these incredible students here at UT and beyond. Did you know that in 2018, only 17% of venture-backed businesses were female-founded? That's not right, and we're gonna change that, and we're gonna change it right here. Okay, so you're already doing my next thing. All of you courageous, amazing women in the crowd, and amazing men who have supported women for so long. I wanna hear you yell. Okay, one more shout out to our really dear friends. So this institute wouldn't be possible without our friends in Texas supporting us. And our technology sponsor at the Women's Institute is Dell Technologies. So thank you, Dell, for believing in us. Before the program was even started, they were saying, we are in. So thank you for that. Everybody, let's have fun today. We have an amazing day ahead of us, an incredible panel of powerful women for you to get excited about. Hook them horns, everybody, let's go. Okay, we have a leader here on campus who is absolutely phenomenal. She inspires me so much. She is vice president of the University of Texas and provost. Mari McKennis, will you please join me on stage? <laughs> excited.
delighted and honored to be with you today, Kendra. This is so exciting to be able to introduce this new program, and I'm really looking forward to our Women's Power She's panel. She's today like Barbara Walters, is what I said. <laughs> so why don't we take a seat, yes. and then we'll meet our other panelists. So our first guest today is an entrepreneur and actor who has made women's empowerment her cause. She is a global ambassador for Girl Rising, a movement that is focused on changing the way girls are viewed around the world. She helped build a nonprofit called We Do It Together, which provides financing for film, documentaries, and television shows, particularly those on women's empowerment. Please welcome an award-winning actor known for her kindness and compassion, Frida Pinto. <laughs> Our next guest is a UT alumna, lawyer, sports commentator, and a former bachelorette. She co-hosts ESPN's Game Night, MTV's new show, Ghosted, and The Bachelor Happy Hour podcast. She is a strong proponent of empowering women. Please welcome Rachel Lindsay. Thank you for bringing this important initiative to UT. So let's get started with our discussion. You shared a little bit at the beginning about what led you to start this institute, but let's roll the clock back and talk about the time when you were just starting out. What were some of the biggest challenges that you faced in getting your dream off the ground? You know, I think for a lot of people, we w like to talk about successes, but I honestly think that a lot of times it's the failures that get us to the successes in our life. And my first business was not a success. Uh, I had a little hat company and I had big dreams of it growing across the United States. But what it did do is instill in me that I wanted to be in fashion and I wanted to do something good. We were creating a lot of headwear for women undergoing chemotherapy at the time. And I knew that my passion was this fashion bug but I also wanted to leave a positive impact. And you know, having my stepfather go through cancer and seeing how we all have such a short time on this earth. And while we're here, he really instilled in me that we need to do something good. And so that led me to Kendra Scott Jewelry. And I look back and I remember when I was you know, going through that failure of oh, why is this happening to me and this is so terrible. But in retrospect, I look back and I'm, that was such an amazing education. And if I hadn't gone through that tough time, that hard time, I could have never built the business that we built today. And I think that's such an important lesson for everyone that there will be struggles. There'll be things in the moment that you think I can't go through, but that you know, entrepreneurial mindset of perseverance, of picking yourself up and dusting your knees <laughs> off, of taking a breath and going, okay, I'm gonna stay open to what the future may hold. Um, that's a really, I think, the best lesson I learned. And, and there's been a lot of obstacles, Mari, along the way. A lot of times I've been told no. I've walked into many boardrooms where no one looked like me. And, um, and asking for funding or asking for investment capital and wasn't taken seriously. And not that those things will completely go away, but we want to do something that will allow these women to be able to jump over any of those hurdles and be able to go to where they want to go and have a successful and happy life. Yeah. yeah. So can we dig a little deeper into what an entrepreneurial mindset is? Because I think thinking like an entrepreneur, which is at the heart of this new institute, is something I know the audience would like to hear you talk about a bit more. You know, I, the, I almost hesitated, to be honest with you, about putting the, the term entrepreneurial in the title. Because being an entrepreneur to so many people means that you need to open a business. 
And that's not what being an entrepreneurial mindset is. So the tools that an entrepreneur needs is to be able to look at what you want in your success, be able to put a vision out there of what you want, and be able to start to tear down the obstacles that get in your way. And that, that mindset of what we just talked about, the perseverance, the surrounding yourself with amazing people who can lift you up in times when you're going to fall, um, those are all things that we want to be able, the tools that you need to be able to be successful in life. Uh, our company has that entrepreneurial mindset, and we hire for people that have that mindset because that's how we solve problems. And that's how when people say that's not possible or no, you can't do that, the entrepreneurial mindset goes, oh, thank you for telling me I can't because I am going to show you that I can. And I think those are the tools, no matter what you do in your life. Um, if you're in the school of education, why can't you be the superintendent of schools someday? You know, if you are in natural sciences, if you are wherever you are in what you achieve and you want to do, we want to help you get there. That is very exciting. And we cannot wait to see what this is going to bring to campus. Um, and so now I'd like to turn to you, Frida and Rachel, and ask you to elaborate on what an entrepreneurial mindset means to you. I have to re Hi, everybody, first of all. <laughs> this is so amazing. I have Frida to say- Frida Pinto's here. Can we just, you know, end this amazing, Rachel. I mean, come on. And can I just add that when I asked them, it was like, oh, yes, we will be there. It was like no question. So y'all are amazing. Thank you. So much. I, I've actually, I have to um, take from where you left off. I've never been to business school, but I still identify as both an entrepreneur and a leader. And I think because I believe that to be any of those, you've got to believe in the power of creation. That you can have an idea, big or small, doesn't matter what it is. You can have the vision and you need to have the drive and focus to see it through. And there has to be a sense of openness. If things don't go the way you plan for it to go, if things fail, like people called, I don't usually like the word fail, yes. but let's just use the word fail because everyone knows the fa word fail. If you fail, it actually is not your down and out. It's actually your learning. You were meant to not reach that particular goal because you were meant to learn something in that moment. And that's pretty much how it started for me, and which is why I say I identify as both an, on, a, an entrepreneur and a leader. It was easier for a lot of people to say no when I first started off, because in the industry that I belong, there, were, there was actually nobody who I could say was my mentor I looked up to because there weren't any South Asians who looked like me. There was no formula that I could really follow. And so I had to create my own. And that's the, word, that's the reason why I stress on the word creation, like believe in the power of creation and just go with the idea that you have in mind, the belief that you can actually see it through. Can you guys hear me? I don't know, I'm kind of loud. Can you hear me? Or is, okay, okay, great, perfect. It's hard to follow what these two wonderful women have said because you pretty much said everything that I would say at the same time. Um, first of all, can I just say how lucky you guys are that this institute is being built here? I went to school here 12 years ago, and I wish something like this had existed because I wish I was sitting in your seat right now where I was able to hear the things that you said or you said and the things that you all are doing. I didn't have that. And I guess I'll speak from a little bit in, in a different way, maybe a little bit more personal. I love that you said being an entrepreneur is different from having an entrepreneurial mindset. I always used to equate the two as the same. I thought, oh my gosh, I could never be an entrepreneur. Um, I know exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go to school, I'm gonna go to college, I'm gonna go to law school, I'm gonna be an attorney, and that's it. And look where I am now, right? Now, now I was on reality TV. I mean, it's, com it's completely, completely, I'm making my parents so proud. It's completely different, but, <laughs> but I think that it's so important when you say entrepreneurial mindset. How I got there, I mean, of course, the way I got to having an entrepreneurial mindset is by, being The Bachelorette and going on TV, but it opened my mind to so much more because I thought I knew exactly what I was supposed to do and how I was supposed to do it, and I felt that I was groomed uh, to be a certain person. But when I really look back and I think about that, I wasn't happy. I, wasn't, I didn't feel like I was myself completely, and I felt that there was so much more that I could do. And I truly felt my creativity was being stifled. And it's 
a crazy turn of events, how it opened my eyes to everything, but it really was me asking the question of whose life am I living? Who, who am I doing things for? Am I doing it for myself or am I living a life for other people? And it was at that point that I started to adopt that entrepreneurial mindset and I started to really tap into what it is that I want to do and start taking control of my own life. And I feel like if you embrace that mindset, you do embody the entrepreneurial spirit and you are fearless in every single thing that you do, whether you have several failures along the way, whether you go on re excuse me, reality TV and figure it out, or you know you learn it in, in school. Um, but yeah, that's, that's anyway, I was gonna go on a tangent, sorry. Okay. <laughs> So the other major word, the idea behind this institute is, of course, leadership. So Kendra, can you tell us how you've grown as a leader over the years and what advice you would give to our audience? You know, I think all of us can look at our lives and look at our childhood or look at experiences and we can say, wow, that person is amazing. And you have to see people that are leading by example, that are, are really showing, you know, ev showing up every day. And when they say these things are important, they're doing those things. I think sometimes also, though, the leaders that we look at that may not be the best leaders. Um, I always say my best boss was my worst boss. And it taught me what I didn't want to look like as a leader. And I knew that I wanted to embody family was important to me and creating a culture of family and treating each other like brothers and sisters and being there for each other. And that meant that if those things were important to me as a mom being there for my kids, it was gonna be important to my team as well. And I didn't want them to miss anything or not be there for their families. And so it's important I think to, you know, from leadership to live by your core values. Um, my mom was a Mary Kay lady uh, and she became a director and she was a mom and she worked that business out of our home and she became a director and had all these women in our house and doing all these training events. And I saw a woman who was raised on a farm, um, who didn't have a college education, but was wicked smart, who put motherhood first, but then created a dynamic career. I mean, that was a symbol of leadership to me at a young age. And I saw that, you know what? It is possible to have all the things in your life. You just have to figure out how to do it, to place that and put importance on it. Rachel and Frida, let's turn the question to you. Um, what all have you learned about your leadership? Um, and what advice would you give to our audience about becoming a leader? Um, I think it's interesting because growing up, and I might be aging myself when I say this, but we used to play this game called follow the leader. And it was such a simple game where literally a child was picked to be the leader and everybody would follow and they would mimic what the leader did. And at a young age, that's what you learn what it is to be a leader. But if you watch that video and you listen to what the women in these chairs are saying, that's not what leadership is. It's so much more than that. It's not mimicking what one person is doing. Martin Luther King, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. has a quote that says, a genuine leader is not a searcher of the consensus. It's a molder of the consensus. And that really means a lot to me. And if you really break down what that quote is saying, it's telling you to create or define your own version of what a leader is and what leadership means to you. And I think that we've all done that in our own way. I think a lot of times you think, oh, if you lead, you have to be the loudest person in the room. It means that you have to take command and you have to take charge. That's not necessarily what a leader is. A leader is someone, as you saw from the video, from all those people's definition of what leadership means, it's about inspiring and motivating and corralling people to find their best selves and to really, you know, lead, the, or you, I guess by example, you lead, scratch that, sorry. I guess it's about, like I said, corralling people to do their best, to live their best lives or to do what's best for them. And I think that you really watch people. I think it's great to have a mentor because you were explaining how your bosses are. Um, for me, my mentor has always been my father and it's the example that he set for me and shown me what leadership is. But leadership is, is not just leading. It is also about following at the same time. Sometimes you have to learn to sit back and watch what other people do and let them be them, their best selves and you learn for them at the same time. I, I, I Thank you. Um, 
So I think what, you've s what you said is exactly what I was going to start with, Rachel. I think you all need to identify the kind of leader you are. There is no right or wrong. Some of it works. Some of it works for the long term. Some of it works for the short term. I, ident I identify myself as the leader who believes in democracy only because I like taking the final decision, and it's a much slower process, but I love listening to all the creative ideas in the room in case I've missed out on something, in case there's something else that someone else suggests that could actually better see this vision come to life. And so I do believe in that kind of leadership. Having said that, there are all different kinds of leadership. I, I don't know if any of you have watched the latest um, Netflix documentary Inside Bill's Mind. You should, you should absolutely watch the documentary. It is such a fantastic documentary, and two of my leader role models are Bill and Melinda Gates, and both of them identify as different kinds of leaders. Melinda is more of the listener leader, and I love that as well. It comes into play so many times when you're doing nonprofit work, especially when there's this top-down approach, which you, know, you kind of have to break through a lot, and you're only talking at the girls, you're not listening to them. You're creating solutions for the girls without listening to them, and so how are you supposed to get create any impact from that. So I feel there's different kinds of leadership that comes into play different times, but the one thing that I feel you can never go in is without being prepared. Preparedness for me is everything. Whether you're going in, whether I'm going in on set, I need to know my lines. I cannot take for granted the fact that I've been doing this for so many years, I've got good memories, so I'll just remember these lines. No, you've got to know your lines. Because it's a teamwork at the end of the day. If I don't know my lines, I'm affecting my co-star's performance, I'm affecting the director's focus, I'm affecting everything. I'm making the whole world crumble in my little world at that point in time. So I think preparedness for me is very, very important. No matter how, how far you've reached in life in terms of your success. And the last thing I'd like to say is define your own success. Because what success means to you may not be the same for someone else. And it's okay. As long as you can define your own success and stick to it, be inspired by others, but don't compare yourself to others because when you compare, you don't shine. You spend all your time comparing. So these are the things that I've learned and I can tell you that as much as I'm saying all of this right now, I fall into the trap of doing all the things I'm telling you not to do. <laughs> <laughs> and so the very last thing I'd like to say is we're all human. And it's okay to make mistakes as long as you can be aware and self-aware that you just did that and you can check yourself and go, okay, I'm comparing again. I shall not do this now. So Frida, I, I'd like to kind of follow up on what you were talking about because you were talking about defining your own success. Um, but I think there's another thing I'd like to get you to talk about. You are such an important leader in organizations that seek to uplift women and girls in important ways. And so what is your North Star for selecting the values that your leadership exemplifies in the groups you'll be working with? Yeah, I think um, the first thing I would like to say is the value, uh, the, val the, the, the quality of listening. You know, I think that's very, very important. A lot of times leaders are so, or people in positions to kind of make changes are so excited and inspired that sometimes they forget to take a step back and go, hold on, I know I have an idea, but I want to listen to that as well first. So I think listening is so important. There's so much that you can learn in the listening process. Um, with Girl Rising India, which uh, was the offshoot of Girl Rising, which is an international documentary film. If you've not seen it, please watch that as well. It's, um, it's stories about nine girls from nine different parts of the world and the obstacles that they face to reach, to achieve a basic edu education to be taken seriously and to be valued. And all these girls are my heroes because the, the, the documentary and these girls don't like to be seen as victims. They like to be seen as survivors and, and women who have ideas and they just want to support. And one of the things that I learned on that particular project, which kind of inspired me to go and launch a Girl Rising India, was that none of these girls came to us without ideas. They all had brilliant ideas. They just said no one was listening to them. They were just handing over solutions and none of it benefited them at all. It just felt like it was superficial, which is why I stress on why listening is very important. After Girl Rising was launched in India, 
then came the next issue, which is, God, it was taking so much time. We had to do all these government um, meetings. We had to do community-led interventions, get the right team together. Again, we did not want to be, you know, have f fall prey to the um, white knight in shining armor going into a country, even though, even though this is India I'm talking about, I was working with an international organization. And so we had to be very careful that we chose leaders at the community level. But all of that was taking time. So the second level, the second value is patience. It takes time, but it all happens. The third one is commitment, because a lot of <laughs> a lot of times, even though we had patience, some of the programs that we started would just abruptly come to an end, and we couldn't understand why. Like we did everything, so what happened? Nothing happened. We just have to work harder, because this is going to take a lot longer than we expected. So just stay committed, and just keep the focus and drive going. And eventually, it just it's, it's, a, it's functioning as well as it possibly can in India, and I'm so proud of it. Um, and, we, and we just, I, th I feel for me the success stories come when the girls come up to us and say, hey, by the way, today I had an idea, I shared it in, in, cl in the classroom, and they listened to me. And so it, it just kind of feels like somewhere you've done the right thing. So commitment for me is very important in all nonprofit programs because it's never a um, one-hour plan or a 10-day plan or a monthly plan or yearly, it's like sometimes takes 10 years, 15 years. Again, watch the documentary and you'll see all the things that Bill started and spent billions of dollars and it still hasn't come to fruition and he's still going for it. And that's such an inspiration for me. So Rachel, before we wrap up, you are starring in a new show on MTV. Uh, and the question is, in an environment like that, which must be fast paced and there are lots of people telling you what to do and pushing and shoving from different directions. How do you stay true to your values? You know, I, was, I, I think I'll speak more from The Bachelorette because with the MTV show Ghosted, that's a fun show, but The Bachelorette really taught me a lot because you're in this role almost where you're this figure and you're supposed to be perfect. You're supposed to almost give people a fantasy because that's what they want even though reality is what they need. You're in a position where you're supposed to be seen and not heard. You are in a position almost where you're set up to be saved, even though you're the lead person in that role as the bachelorette. So how do I stay true to myself in that position? Because if you know anything about me, that doesn't sound like me at all. <laughs> I, I, I'm not a person who, needed, who needs to be saved. I was 31 when I went on the bachelorette and for 31 years up until that point, I only knew how to be myself. That's how I was raised, that's how I've always been, and that got me to the point that I, that I was in at that time. I had been through law school, you know, I had the dream job that I wanted at that time, and now I was sitting in this role as the bachelorette, and that is because I've always been true to myself. I don't know how to be anybody else. I was always, you know, I was raised a certain way, and that's what my parents instilled in me, and that's what they taught my sisters, all of us. And so that, re I really feel like, carried me and allowed me to be myself. And it's how I survived that show, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, never had watched the show before. I mean, I watch it now because I'm a part of this family. But it's, it's truly how I remained true to myself because it's all I knew how to do. And so I really encourage people when... You know, you're, you're stepping outside of your comfort zone, or maybe you're doing something that you're scared of. You have to go to your core values. You have to trust, trust your gut, and you have to trust yourself because, one, there's nobody else like you, and it's gotten you to the point that you are today. And I think when you try so hard to be somebody that you're not, that's when you're going to fail. You know, why you are, you are so uniquely made, and so why do you try to, as you were saying, compare yourself to other people? Why not just be you? And I think as long as you hold on to that, which is what I did, to go back to answering your question, um, I think that it's a recipe for success. You can't fail as long as you stay true to who you are. Well, this has been a great conversation. We would love to keep this up all afternoon, but unfortunately, we are out of time. <laughs> so I want us to thank Kendra Frida and Rachel for being with us and sharing their insights and experiences. Thank you. Wow. Oh 
Oh my goodness, I could sit with them. And this is just a sampling of the amazing female leaders that we are going to bring here to the University of Texas. They are so inspiring. Thank you all so much. Okay, we're not done yet, folks. We have an amazing, amazing friend of mine. We actually met four years ago at the ACM Awards. Her favorite color is yellow, so I knew right away we were going to be fast friends. She has the voice of an angel and the heart of someone you can't even imagine, the love that exudes from her the minute you walk in a room with her. It is my pleasure and my honor to introduce the country music legend, Cam. Hi, you guys, how you doing? Yeah? Are you feeling like badasses yet? You should. You should feel strong. Uh, it's amazing to be around women that have vision like this. I've been obsessed with Kendra for a long time, hearing her story, how she got started, and the fact that she cares so much. Even when we're backstage, she's just talking about you guys and how she wants to give information and help because you guys are about to be the the architects of our whole future. So thank you for coming. Thanks to Kendra for caring so much. This is an amazing thing to be doing. Oh, I promise I didn't know he was your man. I would have noticed a gold wedding band. the time and the place don't know how much this hurts i gave him my heart to break now i know he broke yours first lying right there in my bed while he was lying to you believing the words that he said how could we be such fools head all those nights sounds like I'm telling a lady that I slept with her husband and that's you're correct that's what's happening and I want to tell you why because in real life this happens all the time and women don't get the honesty and the apology that they deserve in this situation so I decided to rewrite the story rewrite the song instead of women being against each other we're here for each other we're showing up like we should do in real life right yeah You can blame me if it helps That's what a good wife would do But you're only cheating yourself Choosing him over the truth Had all those nights That he's given to me I wish that I could give them back to you your man I would have noticed a gold wedding band dying I'd rather you hate me than not understand oh, oh
Thanks. I feel like such a boss in my 80s power suit. <laughs> I knew I was going to show up with a bunch of powerful women, so I had to bring it. I'm normally the minority in a lot of spaces, uh, which I know sounds weird for a white woman to say, but as a woman in country music, there's not a lot of, uh, there's not a lot of us. And I think that's one of those things that makes it so special to have moments like this where we're helping each other because idealistically and usually in education, it looks, it looks okay. You know what I mean? Like when you're getting raised, a lot of times you're thinking, oh, things are fine. And then you get into the workforce and you look around and the higher up you get, you start to say, where'd everybody go? And it's a terrifying thing if you're not ready for it. And I think it's really cool that you guys are arming yourselves so that you don't get phased at all. You just keep blowing through because it's not real roadblocks. There's things that you can do to get past all that stuff. So I could go on forever about how amazing <laughs> it is to be a part of something like this. But um, the cool thing is, is that uh, you have people that believe in you, and I've had people that believe in me, including these two fellows right here. And so um, I want to sing for you guys a song off my second album that's coming up and play you something brand new because it's always fun to check it out on y'all, how you respond to things. It's called Forgetting You When I'm Alone. Rise up like smoke from the bed of this hotel, and I don't do so well forgetting you when I'm alone. The local TV, these walls take pity on. Ice machine in your memory. All I hear down the hall. When it's quiet, I'm quietly saying your name in the silence. You're silently hiding away. And I'm getting older, but you never changed. In a crowd, I could swear. the buzz of the fan, you're the hum of the AC, I can't help reminiscing, as you're singing me to sleep, when it's quiet, I'm quietly saying your name in the silence, you sigh. crowd I could swear I moved on but I'm still no good at forgetting you when I'm alone he doesn't Just laying there asleep. And it's me and my demons. And you rising up like smoke. When it's quiet, I'm quietly saying your name in the silence. You silently hiding away. And I'm getting older, but you never change.
So uh, I was in Austin last summer, and we got to open up for a guy named Sam Smith. Which is, oh, yeah. He is pretty great. <laughs> and I write songs mostly for myself, but every now and then I'm lucky enough to be in the right place at the right time, and I'll write a song for another artist, and I got to be in the room to write a song for Sam's last album. It's The Thrill of It All is the album. The song's called Palace. And it was such a beautiful thing that I wanted to say. I've always wanted to hear someone tell me this, like when I was 13 especially, that when you've loved someone and it doesn't work out how you thought, a lot of times you say to yourself, what a waste of time. What a waste of all that energy. I could have been doing the right thing. And that happens even when you make wrong turns in your career. What a waste. And the truth is, if you do it with your whole heart, and you're open enough to learn from everything that you're doing, it's all the right path. It's never a waste of time. Real love is never a waste of time. So I got to do this tour with him. It was so cool. He had this huge stage that would go out to the middle of the arena, and he said, you'll just stand there on the lift just there. It will take you up like four feet in the air. And I was like, lift like elevator? In heels with no handle? In America, we call that a lawsuit. <laughs> but we're here in the arena. Yeah, I'm, I'm in. Let's do it. And um, he said, and I'd love to stand next to you, but I've got this golden spiral staircase, see? And it'd be a shame not to use it. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you go up there. We'll be the modern day Romeo and Juliet, the straight woman singing up to the gorgeous gay man. <laughs> So it's just me right now, but I want to sing this for you and share it with you. It's called Palace. My head is filled with ruins. Most of them I built with you. Now the dust no longer moves. Don't disturb the ghost of you mm -hmm. they are empty they are warm tell me what we built this for on my way to something more you're the head one I can't ignore mm -hmm. what you say and I regret ever complaining about this heart and all it's breaking it was beautiful 